Hey, welcome to another episode of Beers, Jack, and Barbecue. I'm Craig, man behind the camera's Jack. Today, we're doing another rib roast. So last thing that just came out, we did a rib roast in the rec tech. Um, completely different cook, um, what we're doing today. That one, we actually had that thing fired up around 550 degrees when we put it on for the first 10, 15 minutes or so, and then brought the grill down, well, turned the temperature down to 250 until it finished off. Today, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna do it um, kind of low and slow in a sense at around 250, 275, get it to the temperature we want, which is gonna be probably about 110 to 115 at the most. Um, and then we're gonna sear all the sides of this. Um, so reverse sear on this. Seasoned it up yesterday with some killer hogs, um, the all purpose rub. And I got a little sample thing here of um, competition cow powder from Uncle Steve's. Don't know exactly what's in there, but I mean, definitely know what's in here, the all purpose rub, you know, salt, pepper, garlic. This one definitely heavy on pepper, which is good because I wanted that on this. Um, I kind of did an even coat of both rubs on this at one for the for overnight for 24 hours and uncovered on a rack, just sitting in the fridge, drying out some as far as that goes and absorbing those spices into the meat. So uh, looking forward to doing this because as you should all know by now, ribeye is my favorite. And when you get prime ribeye, you can't beat it. So uh, we'll see you on the grill. All right, we're gonna throw this on. So I got it run just a little bit hotter than I want right now, but that's all right. I have it choked off, so it'll go down a little bit, especially when the meat hits here as well. <clears throat> as you know, I'm gonna probe it the whole time. I'm gonna go the fat side down to start. Um, probably gonna uh, put it on this way. Probably going to, at one point, turn it, flip it over, try to promote that even cooking. So trying to get the center point in there so we can watch this thing the whole time. And uh, we're going to bring it back probably when it's around 70 degrees when I do a turn on it. All right, so we just hit 70 degrees. Going to turn it and spin it just a little bit to uh, promote some even cooking. You'll see a second probe in here. I thought we were having some, some uh, probe issues because it seemed like the temperature was not rising for us. So I'm just going to flip it over to get some promote some even cooking here. Um, we'll leave this go on until it gets to about maybe 95 to 100. And I'll flip it back before we start searing it off. Um, but yeah, so I thought we were having a little because the roast was super cold. It was only about 32 to 33 degrees when I put it on. And it took a while for it to start moving. So uh, double check everything and everything's good. All right, so we just hit 95 degrees. I'm going to flip it back over. I'm also going to open up the vents uh, down below just to uh, get the heat to start climbing on this so we can sear this off. So it's looking really nice. And like I said, I'm going to sear all sides. So I'm going to, like I said, crack the vents open to get the heat to start climbing. And then we may, may pull it a little bit to um, get the fire real hot for searing. All right, so we reached just past 110 is where we want to kind of start doing this and getting it seared, but I want to get the probe out and then get the probes out of the grill as well so I can. Wait, really wants to uh, not cooperate with me, so get these out. And then I've had this uh, running pretty good. I want to clean that so we won't show you this part. I'm going to clean it great and then we're going to start searing this thing off. All right, so I cleaned the grate and actually mixed the coals up a little bit because the, the grate, I had it loaded up pretty good with charcoal. Um, I'm going to go a minute aside here right now. All right, it's just short of a minute because it's cranking pretty good here. All right, just close to a minute again. I don't want to kind of scorch anything too much. We got a nice sear there. 
try to keep this. The tip has a lot of fat in it, so that's wanting to burn right now. I'm going to try to keep that away a little bit. And that charring is really just the fat on the outside. That you, If you can see that or not, I'm not sure, but basically, like I said, that's just the fat right now. So I'm not too worried about that. We'll end up cutting that off as we eat it anyway. All right, there's another minute. So we just need to get this side yet. Like I said, I'm going to get that tip out of there so we don't get any more charring on the fat there. All right, let's see what we got here. Make sure we got everything where we want it. Then we got a good sear. So I'm going to pull this thing off. We're going to let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll be slicing into it. Boy, that fire was nice. As always, cheers. So here we are, end of the cook. Slow and stir kettle, prime rib roast, just a smaller one. Um, didn't mention in the beginning with Jack and I, we did the previous cook uh, on the Rectech. I did mention that, but Jack and I bought the whole prime rib. I cut two nice roasts out of it, cut steaks out of it, cut small like mini steaks out of it. So we got some multiple cooks planned for this ribeye roast. So can't wait to, you know, continue to cook on those and can't wait to dig into this. Struggle in the beginning a little bit just because they had it so cold I, and the reason was I didn't get out of the freezer in time I got out Sunday morning and today's Tuesday night So it almost was just at 32 degrees yet and I had it sitting out in the kitchen for about two hours before we started So it was just finished thawing so we put it on the grill for the first hours like it's just holding temperature So I was worried about probes working right and they were spot-on um, I just changed probes did everything it was it was spot-on just took time for that center to start warming up. Had the grill running around 275 to 290 in that area. That was kind of holding on and I was okay with it being a little bit past 250 for that. But, um, and then right, we flipped it at 70, flipped it back over around, um, I wanna say 95. And then when, and at that point I kind of opened the vents up to let the fire get hot so we could go to searing right away instead of taking time. Cause it was taking long and we do this, you know, on a weeknight. Um, Seasoned it yesterday with some Killer Hogs, um, the all-purpose rub, and then Uncle Steve's competition cow powder. So, um, like I said, I don't know exactly what's in this, but there's definitely a lot of pepper. I could see that when I was uh, putting it on the rub. 24 hours of that, cooked this thing. I said, when I got to 110, we started searing. This is going to be on the low end of medium rare to rare in the middle, but everything else is going to be perfect. So, let's cut in this thing and see how we look. Need to stop my timer there because we were checking this. So... I'm going to cut it right down the middle because Jack and I are sharing this thing tonight. So the fat itself, like I said, was getting crispy from the sear. But that's all that was happening with that. So this is just cut nicely. Oh, man, does that look perfect. So, boy, perfect looking. Medium rare to rare on this on the small end. So let me switch knives here. I'm going to get a little piece off the cap, which is always my favorite here. But does that look good? Well, that's super juicy. It almost juice almost came out when I bit into it the first time. Perfectly cooked, prime rib. Can't wait to dig in this. You can taste the flavors of the garlic, salt, and pepper, and then the little bit of extra extra pepper, which is what I like about that. So I like the combination we did there. So. Hopefully, like we we're seeing, subscribe to the channel, click the little bucket notifications. Um, and before I finish off, we're an SNS and affiliate, so we'll put a link in the description to you're interested in buying some of their products. Like I said, they did give us a grill, but every other product that I have from them, I pr we purchased ourselves. So I just think they're fantastic products and uh, glad we're using them. And uh, we'll see you next time.